Well, here we go. We're going to prove theorem 2.4. This is exercise number 36 on section 2.7. I'm starting with these three givens and this diagram. Yes, you have to draw the diagram with a straight edge. I've got three givens saying these two angles are supplementary. These two angles are supplementary. And I'm going to throw these tick marks in because the given says angles 1 and 4 are congruent. My goal is to prove angles 2 and 3 are congruent as well. Well, let's clean this up. I'll put in these two vertical and horizontal lines to separate my statements from my reasons. I already know where I'm going to start. I'm going to start with my givens. I could list them 1, 2, 3 as lines 1, 2, 3, or I could just collectively call them line 1. I'm not so worried about that. And if you'd like, you can put a 1 over there, but as long as you can tell which statement goes with which reason, I think your teacher will be okay with it. Now, I'm going to make this statement for line two. I'm going to invoke the definition. I know it's a definition and I'm very careful to use it in the correct direction. Notice if two angles are supplementary, that's line one. Then their measures add up to 180. That goes in line two. Notice no proper names here. I don't want to see an angle one. I don't want to see a, a name on the right hand side. Just definitions, theorems, or postulates. Let's go for line three. We got some momentum here, and I'm going to say that the measure of angle one is equal to the measure of angle four. Hmm. Well, where does that come from? Well, that's going to be the definition of congruent angles. Because I'm given angles one and four are congruent in line one, I'm using that definition to say, well, now they're equal. Their measures are equal. Okay. Um, I need to go way back to algebra. Let me see. If A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C. That you all remember. You learn that in algebra as the transitive property. The transitive property is going to work here, too. Let's suppose A is the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 equals 180. That's your B. 180 is also equal to the measure of angle 3 plus the measure of angle 4. A equals B and B equals C, then a equals C. Or in this case, the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2, since that equals 180 and 180 also equals the measure of angle 3 plus the measure of angle 4, I come up with this line, the transitive property. I'll move that off to the side, but remember that. Now, I'm looking at this and I've noticed something. I've noticed that I've, I've got an equation up here saying that 1 and 4 are equal, so why don't I just replace that. So line 5, I'm going to replace the measure of angle 4 with a measure of angle 1. When I make a, a replacement or a substitution, well, I guess that's substitution. Line 6, you can see we're almost done. Line 6, both sides of the equation, you'll note, have a, a measure of angle 1, measure of angle 1. I could take those away from both sides. When I take something away from both sides, that is subtraction. And my equation now says the measure of angle 2 equals the measure of angle 3. Well, I do know that when angles have two measures that are equal, I know they are congruent. Now that's the very thing we wanted to prove, so that's obviously our conclusion. It's the very last line. We're going to get from here to here with a definition. It's this definition, but watch this. It's going to be in reverse or I should say the converse of this definition because I'm going the other direction. If the measures of two angles are equal, then the angles are congruent. So there you go. We've got a proof. We've got it all done. And you're wondering, why would we ever do that? Well, we went through this exercise simply to prove theorem 2-4. If I had the same givens and I asked you to prove it, let's say, a more sensible way, you may have just done away with all these, all of this. Oh, let's just get rid of all this and get rid of all these lines, line numbers, and let's just do that. And then my proof would be complete if I had the theorem 2.4 to work with. So that's the whole point. We make these theorems. The theorems are something that's proven. Once it's proven, we could use it in a proof. So these seven lines 
of the previous proof now turn into 2. But you can't use a theorem to prove the theorem. you got to do it the hard way. Once you know this, you can use it in subsequent proofs.